I want to make you aware of the fact that this landing gear does collapse, it does fail, it's not infallible. It did happen, it does happen. The odds are in your favor that it won't, but every once in a while, you get kicked in the head by the odds. When I drop a trailer, I follow the simple procedure that I've done for years, is I'll crank the landing gear down, unhook, pull the pin, ease ahead, and just go very slowly and carefully out from underneath the trailer, just in case something goes wrong, like the landing gear collapsing. Now, it hardly ever happens, but it does happen. In this instance, I was pulling a, a chemical tanker that I was dropping in the company's yard. You may not have noticed this on, on your trailers, but some trailers, particularly chemical trailers and tankers, will have a sign, a little sticker, right on the landing gear that will say, do not drop trailers when loaded. And the reason is, they built the trailers light, and the landing gear is simply not meant to take that weight. But at the company I was pulling for at the time, it was common practice to drop loaded trailers. Always made me nervous. So I unhooked from this loaded trailer. I was parked in a lineup, back to new lineup, between drop trailers. They were all loaded. So I eased ahead, hung underneath the trailer for a second or two to make sure it was going to be okay. This leg collapsed and down she went. Now, this trailer, I was in tight enough to two other trailers that this tanker, when it rolled and hit and leaned, it would have hit the other loaded chemical tanker beside it. So, you can't imagine the potential environmental mess that this would have cost. It would have, it would have cost the company hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in cleanup. Now, at the time when this happened, I was an owner-operator for this company. And companies are just famous for passing the buck on to owner-operators. So, I could have ended up with a huge bill that had absolutely nothing to do with what I had done. They would have just blamed me on the problem for some reason. They would have found a reason. Companies find a reason to take money out of owner-operators. So, I saved myself some money too, I'm sure by catching this trailer because otherwise they'd have blamed the whole thing on me just like carriers like to do and they'd have handed me the bill even though it was their equipment that failed not mine. As it was I was able to catch the trailer as it dropped. I caught it on the back frame of my truck in the back drives and I was able to save it from dropping because I had pulled out slowly and then I had taken the time to sit to make sure everything was going to be okay. When I unhook I always do it with the window down. So as I'm pulling ahead, I can hear what's going on behind me too, as well as watching in the mirror. So I recognized the noises. It didn't sound right. And I was watching the mirror and down she went. So I caught it. And when you think about it, when you look at the overall length of this trailer or any trailer, and then look at the, the landing gear, that's not a whole lot of material holding up an awful lot of weight. So it's not unusual that every once in a while they'll buckle and give, particularly if it's an older trailer like the tanker that I had been pulling. So be aware, it is possible for landing gear to fail. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. So when you unhook, after you've pulled the pin and uncoupled your airlines, ease out from underneath the trailer, but hover for a second or two, maybe 30 seconds just to make sure that trailer is going to be okay sitting there on its own before you pull right out and drop away. And if you're putting a kingpin lock on the trailer, make sure you do it while the tractor unit is still underneath part of the trailer. So should the landing gear go, it'll save you from being crushed. This is a good safe practice. Accidents like this are, are infrequent, but it could be serious to the point of killing someone. When you unhook, take your time, ease out from underneath the truck just to make sure everything's okay. And make sure you've unhooked your airlines too. It'll give you a chance to think about the whole process that you've done. What I used to do when I unhooked was I would do everything in exactly the same order every time and that way I wouldn't miss a step. And I learned that the hard way. I learned that by pulling an airline off one time. So after that I did everything in an ordered sequence. And then I would, uh, I would remember better that 
the procedure and I would not forget to do something. But the lesson here today is when you're dropping the trailer, be very careful, ease out from under it because all of a sudden you're putting an awful lot of load force down on the landing gear and the landing gear can fail. You know what else was kind of disappointing about this experience was I saved that carrier an environmental cleanup, perhaps two of them because of the trailer next to me that this trailer would have hit. I saved them, I'm sure, hundreds of thousands of dollars in this instance. And you know what? Not one person from that company took the time to thank me for my quick action and saving them a huge bill. Now this type of thing can happen to a rookie driver or it can happen to an experienced driver. The point of the matter is they're going to try to blame the driver. So it doesn't matter whether you're a rookie or experienced. What matters is you take the time to move slowly and do it carefully and then the accident won't happen and then they won't be able to blame you for it. Be careful out there, keep your wits about you and I will see you on the backhaul.